So now we're going to talk about finding the volume of a solid where cross sections have some nice known shape. So one of the keys to this is the idea that if you have some strange shape with a tiny amount of thickness to it, and if you know the area of the face, then the volume of this little slab of, of, of stuff will be the area of the face times the thickness of the slice, right? This little amount there. And so, kind of like how we slice up areas, we are going to slice up volumes into nice little pieces. So, for a good start, let's look at a fairly simple shape. Let's look at a square pyramid. So this is a base and we're imagining that we have a pyramid on top of that base. Okay, so these two sides have the same length. Maybe each of these sides is length four. And then the height of this, uh, the height of the uh, pyramid will know, let's say the height is uh, seven. Okay, so we got four here, four here, height is seven units. We want to find the volume of this shape. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to slice up the volume up into a bunch of little pieces. And so we're trying to figure out how can I slice this so all the slices are have a nice simple shape. And the way we can do that here is by slicing this way, right, for various sort of up and down values. If I slice the function here, that slice is going to look like a square, right? Because the base is a square, they're going to be squares all the way up and down. Now, we don't just want like an area though, we need a volume, and so we're going to approximate this, just like we approximate areas with tiny little rectangles, we're going to approximate this with a tiny little rectangular slab, if you will. So we're going to give that a little bit of thickness. Now the approximation here comes in that we're going to imagine that the sides are straight and so that this is actually a rectangular solid. So the volume of this will be length times width times height. It'll be that surface area with a little bit of thickness like we were talking about a second ago. Okay, And the idea is, just like with areas, that in the limit then it all ends up working out okay. So, we need to find the volume of this slice. Volume of the slice. And the volume, of course, is going to depend upon where we are slicing, because down here at the bottom, the volume will be larger, whereas at the top, the volume will be smaller. And so we need to introduce a variable representing where we are slicing. So, drawing a perpendicular down from the top to the center of the base, we're going to introduce a variable to represent the location of that slice. Now we have an option. We can either introduce the variable as the measurement from the bottom, or we can introduce our variable as the measurement from the top. Either one works just fine. It actually is easier to here to measure from the top, but I think it's a little more natural to measure from the bottom. So let's go ahead and call this distance here, let's call this distance y. Okay. So to figure out the dimensions of our slab in order to find the volume of it, uh, it's kind of hard in the three-dimensional picture, so we're going to imagine we're looking at this thing straight on, and if we looked at it straight on, it would look like a triangle. A triangle with a base of four and a height of seven, right? And my slice, we're imagining, let me move the seven up here, uh, my slice I'm imagining residing somewhere right around here. What we really need to know is what is the width of that slice in terms of, in terms of this measurement, y. Okay? So we need to relate the width of the slice to the height y. And the way we can do that is using an idea called similar triangles. So similar triangle says that if I have two triangles with the same angles, 
So we're imagining that the angles of this triangle are the same as the angles of that triangle. Then if we look at any two dimensions of the small triangle and the corresponding dimensions of the larger triangle, that the ratios will be equal. In other words, in this case, that the height, the ratio of height to base for the smaller triangle will equal the ratio of height to base for the larger triangle. And that works for any two sides. You can use hypotenuse uh, slant sides uh, instead of the, of the vertical if you wanted to. So in this case, we have a similar triangle here. This small triangle here has the same angles as the large triangle, which means we can relate the two. If this length is y, then this length here, the height of the small triangle, will be 7 minus y. The total height is 7, this part is y, so 7 minus y gives me 7 minus y for the height there. So, for the big triangle, the big triangle has a height of 7 and a width of 4. The small triangle has a height of 7 minus y and a width of w. And now we can solve this for w. So I could multiply by w on both sides, and then multiply by 4 7 on both sides. And the width of my slice is going to be 4 7 of 7 minus y. Now I can go back and I can write a formula for the volume of this slice, because now I know its dimensions. I know the width here. Right? I know the width here now in terms of y. I know this side too because it's square. And so the volume of this slice will be w times w, or in other words, w squared, which in this case is 4 7 times 7 minus y squared, times the thickness. Now the thickness is some little change in y, right? Some tiny little y amount. So dy for the volume of, the, uh, for the thickness of that slice. So area of the face times the thickness giving me the volume of the slice. So now that we have the volume of one slice, we can find the volume of the whole thing, of the whole pyramid by, you guessed it, adding up all those little slices. So we're going to add up all of those 4 7 4 minus y squared dy's. We're going to add up the volume of the slices using the integral for all y values from the very bottom y value of 0 to the very top y value of 7 and that will give me the volume of the whole pyramid.